for today, we would like to hear the perspective from our young medical students and doctors as they share their insights and perspectives in several issues affecting their education, training, and their future. So this first panel discussion is titled Medical Class 2020 and Beyond. So we will be joined by medical students and recent medical school graduates from all over uh, Metro Manila in which we will get their perspectives on diverse issues that we think they should in, uh, advise on our young doctors wannabe. So let me introduce our panelists. First, we have Dr. Michelle Iala. Uh, she is a graduate of the UP College of Medicine of the Intermed program. So the Intermed program is the seven year program of the College of Medicine, which was uh, uh, shortened from the typical nine year traditional program. She is class president for five years and she received the leadership award on her graduation. She is also a track and field athlete and she has won championships during the Palarong Medicina and during the COVID pandemic, uh, it, this is truly impressive. Michelle and her co-interns at PGH volunteered to stay and take care of COVID patients. Our second panelist is Dr. Ivan Simpalco. He is a graduate of the University of Santa Tomas Faculty of Medicine and Surgery last June, and he graduated magna cum laude. Currently, he is a postgraduate intern at the DOH uh, Philippine Center for Specialized Healthcare. Before he, he became a doctor, he was a nurse and he graduated cum laude. And he is a member of several organizations like Pax Romana Medicine Unit and the Red Cross Youth Council. Then we have Dr. Seth Yao. Dr. Seth graduated from UP in 2019 and is currently working as an occupational health physician at QualiMed. During his medical school, he actually took multiple clerkship rotations at Harvard Medical School, Memorial Sloan Kettering, and the State University of New York. He spent several months doing research on COVID-19 and very impressive too, he has published articles in peer-reviewed journals about COVID-19. His hobbies are swimming, dancing, and traveling. Finally, we actually have an import from the United States. He is Dr. Edward Christopher D, or Chris. He is currently a fourth year medical student at Hartford Medical School and is on his research year. As a researcher, he has six concurrent projects across America and very impressive resume. He has published 43 full-length articles. He has presented 28 abstracts, and he hasn't even finished medical school. He plans to go into radiation oncology, and his research interests are in gastrointestinal and genitourinary cancer. He is originally from Quezon City, and he graduated from Xavier in grade school before he migrated to Canada. So we have a very impressive list of panelists for the day. So let us all welcome them to our screen. Okay, welcome guys. Uh, how are you guys doing today? Okay, We're good, I'm thank sorry. you for having us. Okay, okay. So what I will do is I will discuss, uh, I will uh, ask a question and I will ask everybody to answer it. And then, uh, and I'm sure uh, we will be getting a lot of interesting questions from our viewers too. So you could speak English, Tagalog or Taglish, whichever you want are com comfortable with. So let me start. How do you define a millennial doctor? Do you think there is a generation gap between a millennial doctor and a consultant? And you think the millennial doctor is a misunderstood being? Michelle, you want to take the first crack? Um, I think 
I think like in any generation naman, there will always be a, a gap. There will always be a gap in terms of um, the attitudes and worldviews. So um, I think it's a matter of um, trying to uh, get your point across without being disrespectful. Um, when I uh, apply this or I, I, I think about my own experiences um, in PGH, it's not the most ideal setting and obviously what we want is the ideal setting. So there will be times when we want to improve things and this might be labeled as mareklamo, um, but I believe that there's always a proper avenue and a proper way of doing things. And um, I think if you're able to articulate yourself properly and if you're able to do so respectfully and um, give suggestions to how to fix problems, I think um, we're able to improve the situation. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, Michelle. How about Seth? Hi. Okay. Um, I can I can speak for my experience in my batch. I would say, in PGH, when we were doing our clerkship and internship years, we also heard that uh, at times our seniors found us also mariklamo, and <laughs> I think the general sense was that we didn't have as much respect for tradition, which I would say is probably half true because. Maybe as a millennial, we feel like we want our jobs to have meaning and we're pretty resistant to simply doing something because that's how it's always been done. But I feel like a good solution for this would be to just have dialogue between the parties involved. And we're, it's not that we're not willing to do the work. We just want to know why we're doing it and what we're doing to improve how things are. And at that point. Okay, thank you, That's Seth. Uh, okay, thank you, Seth. How about Dr. Ivan? How do you define a millennial doctor? Mm, okay, so doctor, uh, I don't know if you're going to agree with me that the reason why this topic is really a hot issue or a widely talked about um, topic is because uh, being a millennial or being a millennial doctor in itself is uh, truly riddled with a lot of general uh, generalizations and stereotypes. Uh, and, uh, Dr. Uh, Seth and Dr. Michelle, uh, yeah, mareklamo. And the I think the general idea of a millennial is that uh, we are lazy, we are uh, easily offended, you know, and we, we think we are entitled. So they think we are entitled either to an opinion or uh, for privileges, and. I think that's the general picture of a millennial to an older generation, but I kind of disagree with that. Although, of course, some people would definitely fit that kind of uh, kind of description, but I think they are more of the exception rather than the rule. And I think a millennial doctor is someone who is, you know, um, who is open-minded, who is adaptive, dynamic. Uh, millennial doctors are very skeptic, um, especially we grew up in this age of information, or rather. Uh, so they say age of misinformation. Uh, that's why uh, millennial doctors are more driven to seek for the truth, you know, for logical rationale. And I think sometimes that could be the reason why friction occurs between um, conversation between with an uh, with a doctor with a senior doctor. And I think uh, what truly really defines a millennial doctor would be is that they are truly collaborative. You know, parang, that is how they want the workplace to be. Um, and are millennial doctors misunderstood? And I think that is a common occurrence that you know misunderstanding will happen between generations. And it's quite often that we see um, that one generation is very, uh, will look at the next with uh, much skepticism. Um, I think that is due to the difference in the background that they grew up in and, you know, their expectations from one another. Um, I, I guess, and to sum it up, no, uh, I think a millennial doctor is really someone who is uh, adaptive and willing to, you know, work well with those around him. Thank you, Trajan. 
Uh, thank you, Ivan. I think uh, you were discussing uh, a very, uh, you know, a very idealistic type of uh, medical student who I think, I think Dr. Anna and I were probably like that during our time. So maybe we were ahead of our time. So let's ask our millennial from the U.S., Dr. Chris. So thank you for the question. I think the, um, I guess I'll push back a little bit on the definition of an above millennial because I don't think they are quantized that way because, you know, every generation grows up surrounded and in the context of the culture in which it, is, it, it finds itself. And I think millennial is ultimately kind of an artificial definition of, of, you know, when one was born. What is it, 1989, say? Does 1988 and 1980, 1990, like, function really that differently? I don't know. And I think it's more a question of, how people are able to integrate what is their concept of truth and, into into and, and apply that to what they believe is right and wrong and in, in, in how they're going to proceed. Um, I think uh, building off what everybody's said so far is that we fundamentally have grown up in a in 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 a in a context that is different from from what every other generation has ahead of us. We have the knowledge of the world on our smartphones, um, and that I think can equip millennials with. A certain audacity to, to push back against um, something that we believe to be true or untrue. Um, but I think that should also come with a certain degree of humility where we realize na may pagkakamali din tayo and that there are things that the other generations have gained by experience that we have yet to actually kind of live through. Um, so I think, you know, in, in, in thinking about the question of what defines a millennial doctor, I think... Uh, there's kind of three areas that, that, that have come to mind. The first is, I think the social milieu that we find ourselves in is quite different. People tend to be pretty socially aware about issues that were not as, I think, talked about um, 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 in, in prior generations. And that's just kind of how the arc of, 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 of uh, culture has moved. Um, I think the second piece is technology. I think that uh, does set us apart from um, other generations and that we're the most connected generation to have probably ever walked the earth. And whether or not that's, Good or bad, I think, is, is kind of a moot point, but it's just kind of how, how things are. Um, and then the third is that those two factors, the social awareness and then the access to technology and information, influence um, our training and our priorities. I think there's less of a focus on stoicism of, of uh, kailangan matigas, you know, kailangan tiisin ang lahat ng mangyari. Um, and more of focus on the desire for some form of truth. And I think it's incumbent upon us to understand that our form of truth could be a moving target as well. Um, and I think that's where we stumble sometimes. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chris. Thank you, everyone. So let's go to the next question. I think we want to know more of yourself. So as I remember during medical school, you know, we do all have interests and hobbies. However, you know, when you go through medical school, there's a lot of time spent on studying and clinical bedside rounds uh, to study on our cases. So if you could tell me what your interests are and if you were able to continue them during medical school or you put your hobbies or interests on hold. So maybe I'll start with Michelle again. Um, so for me, I really needed to find something outside of medical school to keep me sane. Um, so I joined uh, the track and field team, which was a nice outlet because, you know, I got my exercise in and then it was also a way to de-stress. And obviously with your teammates, you're able to bond and have fun outside the classroom setting. Um, and then also, I'm also, since I'm also the class president, um, that was, um, I, I went into that because it's always kind of been my thing. Like in high school, I was in student council. Um, so it kind of just felt natural to get into it. And I actually enjoyed um, being class president because it um, gave me a seat at the table where um, I could give feedback about uh, how the curriculum was being implemented, about how uh, classroom activities were being done. And it, was, it felt good to be able to voice out concerns from my class. So I guess that's tying it into what we were talking earlier talking about earlier uh, with regards to millennial doctors. Um, I really think it's a matter of um, dialogue. So sitting at the table and being able to talk to um, our professors and the hospital consultants and the directors and coordinators, um, it felt great to be able to share what the students are going through. And, you know, 
at the end of the day, it's really communication, it's dialogue. So that was something that was also apart from being a medical student that I got to do, which I really enjoyed. And I think it's important to find these outlets because uh, medical school is tough uh, and you can lose yourself. So it's good to have different things that you can do outside of studying. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Michelle actually uh, was cl class president for five years, right? And you won medals too at the Palarong Medicina. Yeah. Right? Yes, okay. yes, that's correct. Okay, let's go to Seth. I, I think Seth is an excellent swimmer. Do you want to share your story, Seth, about being a swimmer during medical school? Um, well, you think about your heart. You are not in school. I feel like so many things. Free swimming was ultimate it was very it was the things to love so that's how it started but but and with a hobby like swimming, I felt like it was too like But I found this team and we got along and we were people and enjoyed So I, when I this hobby, there were many things going into it. It was the people that I spent time with. And then we were my students that I admired. So we got to study together, we got to go out together. And all those things come together. We did so easy to always just keep hanging out, even now that we're graduated. And we would go to the beach now that we can't with the lockdowns. We would still have online hangouts, everybody would ask me. I feel like if you don't know what you can do here, it's important to just quickly make a list, see what's important in this world. And then whatever puts all those things together in an intersection, I think that would be good. For me, swimming was good because I got to meet people in my school, I got to meet people in Jerome Med, and I got to meet people outside medical school. So, whatever I needed to do, and I could do it alone. I needed me time. So, it was the perfect thing for me. Thank you, uh, thank you Seth. I think we had problems. Yeah. Hello. Oh. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm Hello. Back. So thank you, Seth. I think we had problems uh, with our connectivity with you, and uh, I, as far as I remember, you have won more than like 20 medals as a swimmer since you were young, right? So congratulations. And somebody said you are like the Michael Phelps of the UP College of Medicine. <laughs> is it? Is that correct? That's true. <laughs> Oh, that's true. Well, Michelle is agreeing. So, how about Dr. Ivan? Uh, what are, what were you? What are your interests? And did you have to uh, hold on your interests, or you actually continue doing your interests and hobbies, doing uh, this very demanding medical school and internship? Uh, well, unfortunately, in my case, no, I had to set aside my passion for sports uh, during med school. Uh, well, primarily, I think I had my fair share of experiences um, back in college and back in high school, uh, wherein I had a lot of extracurricular activities. And you know, in med school, I had very a lot of personal reasons why I had to, you know, set aside my uh, passion for, example, for volleyball. Well, I did try to join the varsity. But uh, with the conflict of schedule and, you know, uh, you know, as Dr. Anna mentioned uh, before, uh, I'm from Pampanga and I go home to the province every week, almost every week. So that was really kind of a conflict with the training schedule. So that really uh, put me in a bind. Uh, I had to really um, set my priorities straight that right now, um, I am studying to be a doctor, and I think uh, you know, I have enjoyed 
um, these passions for quite a while already. And I guess it's time to really um, give more time to, uh, to for, for my dreams, no? uh, becoming a doctor. And uh, although I joined some organizations, I was not really an active or a very active member. So I did not, I did not buy for any position or as ever any, any position in the organization. So, but I was a very supportive member uh, with my friends in the different organizations that I joined. Uh, but of course, the thing is I, I cannot commit to an organization just the, uh, like the way that I did before. You know? So I, there was a time that I captain, I captain the captain varsity team. Um, before med, this happened before med school, and you know, I cannot, I, th I don't think I can do that anymore when I was a med student, medical student. So, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Ivan. How about uh, Chris? Uh, I know you're very busy with your research, but I know you did mention that you have an interest in creative writing. You want to tell us about that? Sure. Um, so prior to medical school, prior to the whole kind of uh, medicine thing in my life, I spent a lot of time playing the piano. Um, that was my outlet every day for kind of processing things. But when med school started, I didn't have time to, to, to stay good. And I found that, you know, I just didn't want to pick it up again because all my, my, my skills were, were atrophying. Um, but I found that what medicine gifted to me was um, insight into, uh, I think, pretty intense insight into human condition from the lens of someone working in close proximity to patients. That's a lot of why I want to go into oncology because we get to see how intensely people confront their own, their own, their own mortality, their own fears, and I think more importantly, their own sources of hope. And that to me has been a, a large kind of inspiration for, 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 for writing, which has been my way of teasing out lessons about life from people who confront their, 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 their deaths. And um, I found that writing allows me to one, honor patient stories and to actually sit down and give pause to the things that I am seeing every day as someone who works in the hospital. Um, writing has been a great source of joy for me um, and it's something that I, I have been um, working hard to share with other people. I, I make an effort to publish when I can, um, you know, pieces at the interface of humanities and medicine, not just in medical journals, but also in like the Philippine Daily Inquirer. Um, but a lot of it is really my way of processing what I see and also honoring the experiences of, of, of the patients that I have the privilege to care for. Um, so in some sense, medicine has taken one of my hobbies, which is music, but has given me another, which is writing. Um, yeah, thank you. Okay, so thank you very much. So for our next question, this is gonna be fun. Uh, you know, the theme for our uh, conference is destined to be heroes. So I believe, you know, from the doctors to the nurses, to allied medical personnel, our security, our administrative staff, we are all heroes on our own right. So, yung question ko ngayon is, uh, who is your personal hero? And if you could tell us why, and please do not say it's the Avengers. So, let's start with Michelle. Oh, okay. Um, my personal hero, wow, well, that's so hard. <laughs> it's like a Miss Universe question. Um, <laughs> I think um, right now what comes to, who comes to mind is my grandfather. Um, my grandfather passed away last year, but he was someone who worked um, very hard. Um, he was not a doctor, but uh, he came from, they weren't very rich. Uh, they didn't come from much, but uh, he worked very hard uh, throughout grade school, high school, college, um, and then eventually he was able to go to the States to do his master's there. Um, I remember him telling stories about how when he was in grade school, he would tell newspapers uh, to be able to get through school and then, you know, just worked hard. And I think the, the, that attitude, um, the discipline and hard work, I, I think I got that from him and it's been passed on to his son, so my father and to me and to his grandchildren. And I think I carry that with me um, until today and it helped me go through medical school, which I personally found very difficult um, in terms of just the workload and of course working in the setting of PGH where things can get very difficult. Uh, you go on 36 hour shifts and things like that. And you, and the thing, you, you mentioned earlier about um, what the life is like inside the OR as a medical student and I've encountered things like that. So 
the resilience and the discipline and the hard work. Um, I got that. I think I got that from him, and I carry that with me till today. So yeah, I consider him my hero. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Uh, Seth, uh, here we have Seth. Who's your personal hero? Is it Michael Phelps? <laughs> Well, no, it's not Michael Phelps, sadly. Uh, my personal hero is actually my dad. So for me, I really admire him because he is willing to put himself second to the needs of all his kids. And he's not afraid of working hard or giving anything up that he feels is necessary for us to do well. And so the way that manifests itself is when he felt like I had to live away from home, it was really hard for him because I was the youngest kid for a while and we're really close. And he, it's important for him for the whole family to be together. But when I told him it was hard to do medical school and always have to drive home and then I would have to brave floods when the storms got bad. He said, you can stay in a condo. I'll support you however you need. I don't know anything about medicine, but uh, if you tell me it's important, then it's important, we'll do it. And that brings me to the second point, which is he's really understanding of his kids because he wanted me to go into family business. And personally, I was okay with that, but I told him I felt like if I didn't go into medicine, I would regret it for the rest of my life. And to him, even though he didn't understand that, he said, well, if it's that important for you, you pursue it. And like I said, anything uh, you feel like you would need from me, we're going to support you the whole way. And finally, when it took sacrifices on his end, like uh, he had to give up seeing me for a while. When we would be in clerkship or internship, we'd always be in the hospital and he's always worried about how things sound like in the news about PGH or how it looks like when he comes. And he said, if, if that's really the life you want for yourself, that's OK. I will support it. And I understood that it was, it was strange for him to see me do those things. But he tried not to show it. And that's a really big thing for me. So I feel like if I can even be a little bit like that with my kids or with other people that I would like to mentor or support, I feel like I would have succeeded. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Seth. So let's call on Ivan, who is uh, your personal hero. Uh, in my case, I'm para ang hero po mamile kung sino yung person. Kung isa lang ang sasabihin ko, no? So, yung personal hero. Kasi ang dami-dami ko po tinitignan na napaka-significant sa buhay ko. Whom I consider heroes then, so. Una na, syempre, both my parents consider them as heroes kasi they were very supportive with our education, naming magkakapatid. So, kami tatlo, we studied medicine. Um, the, uh, I know that demanded a lot from them, uh, you know, finances. Uh, it, it ate a lot of our uh, resources. Pero, uh, naging supportive sila. Binigay nila lahat yung mga kailangan namin. Um, tapos, uh, alam mo inuuna talaga nila yung mga anak nila compared sa sarili nila. Na dinelay nila yung gratification for themselves uh, para lang mabigay yung mga pangailangan namin. Then aside pa doon, um, yung next sa kanila, I look at my brother as really someone, um, as a role model, very ideal role model. Um, you know, he, yeah, he shared ko na lang, he recently topped the um, PSPIM, uh, board, specialty board exam, and he, you know, na, he placed top one so sa examination na yun. Um, and I guess, nakita ko sa kanya kung paano ba talaga, uh, nakita ko sa kanya isang ideal doctor, kung paano niya mahalin yung mga pasyente niya, kung paano niya mahalin yung pamilya niya. So I guess, really, ang heroes para sa akin, yung family ko. So hindi lang limited sa parents and kapatid, kasama na rin dyan yung mga tita ko na naging supportive rin talaga sa amin sa sa amin sa education natin. So ang ang, ang dami kong sabing naging hero para sa akin. Ha? Kaya nandito ako ngayon hindi lang dahil sa sarili kong effort kundi lalo na dahil sa um, pinigay nila sa akin. 
Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ivan. Uh, how about Chris? So, Jun, thank you for the question. Um, I, I've been thinking about it for the past a couple minutes, and I think uh, first and foremost, the kind of, I guess, the definition of PD Punamen about hero. Um, it's funny that you mentioned mga Avengers, mga Batman, because you know, heroes that people like to talk about is that they are heroes that we can strive towards but cannot actually ever be because they're portrayed as perfect in some certain way, right? And I think a true hero is someone who is imperfect and comfortable in their imperfection, but at the same time, inspire you want to be better. And I um, will uh, ko po yung mga sa akin and I'll say that. Um, I have I hold my parents and my sister as as kind of the three main heroes in my life, um, for for various reasons. The first is my dad, but he uh, is an exemplar of fortitude and strength throughout whatever comes his way. He's the kind of person who deals with whatever whatever he has to deal with at work, um, or elsewhere, you know, and 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 does not bring any of that negativity to home. And it's something that I hope to emulate, and I'm working hard to 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 be able to 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 do myself. Um, the second is my mom, of course, who is, um, I guess, a, a, a great, a fantastic example of, of, of how to live with so much generosity um, and how to give herself to the people that she cares about. Um, I, you know, she did not end up in medicine, but it's someone who I think would have been perfect for it um, because of her ability to live with so much generosity and always put herself um, after the people that she cares about. Um, again, something that I am working hard to emulate. Um, and last but not least is my sister, um, who's my best friend in the world. Um, she's my younger sister, but she is infinitely wiser um, and infinitely more talented in, in, in any way, shape, or form. And I hold her as someone that I, I want to be like, um, um, except in terms of height, maybe she's a little smaller than me. Um, but uh, she's someone whose friendship, whose existence, whose kindness is uh, proof to me that we are not alone in this world. And um, I'm kind of, you know, infinitely grateful to her for that. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I think uh, we can all agree that family, our parents, are probably our personal heroes. So I think this would be our last uh, round of question and we will be entertaining online questions. So you, next question is something, you know, very current. So uh, let's go to the pandemic. Uh, with the pandemic, you know, na apekto han yung ano natin, the way we study, our training, uh, and also mental health as well. So I want you to describe what changes happen dun sa institution yo, how you're able to adapt, and if your plans for next year, let's say gusto mo mag residency next year, you put it on hold. How does the pandemic change your training and your future plans? So let's start with Michelle. Um, so for me, so my batch of interns, uh, we were the batch that got hit by this pandemic. So major remarkable yung nangyari sa amin kasi kami yung na, um, kami yung na lambanog when there was this lambanog poisoning that happened. Um, kami rin yung nataal when taal volcano erupted. And then kami rin yung na COVID. So, um, our class, our batch motto is 2020 legendary, and I think we truly uh, lived up to it. Um, so our internship was cut short. We ended up having to do rotations online. Um, but before uh, rotation started online, there was this gap where uh, we, my co-interns and I, we volunteered to stay in PGH despite um, the APMC um, declaring that, you know, interns should be pulled out, we decided to stay and help out because we knew that the hospital would have a hard time without the interns, um, especially PGH, which relies heavily on its students um, who cater to its patients. So we decided, we volunteered, we stayed in the wards, um, some stayed in the ORs to help out. Eventually, it was really deemed unsafe, so we had to be pulled out completely from the hospital. Um, and we were then shifted to a uh, telemedicine hotline, which um, I helped set up uh, together with the several interns, some consultants, and the chancellor. We set up a telemedicine hotline within the PGH compound, but a separate building. Uh, it was called the Bayanian Hotline. It's still running until now, um, and it's it was made to cater to COVID patient queries and also 
to those who wanted to donate. So we were able to match donors and figure out like, because some of them would call and ask, you know, what does the hospital need? What what can we donate? And so we were able to give them that kind of information. Um, so that that's what we did for internship. And then after that, we shifted to online rotations, which of course was not the most ideal, but given the circumstances, there was really nothing we could do. Like I had to go through my OB internship online, which is, you know, that's not, that's nothing like the actual uh, rotation. Um, but we made the most out of it by attending conferences, which the residents would have with their consultants. And we would also have quizzes and exams. Currently, we're preparing for the board exams happening this November. So we're at it every day. Uh, we have review classes, but they're all online. Um, and obviously, given COVID, they have all these rules for how the exam will be implemented, which is, which is, which will make things a little difficult because you know you have to take the exam and you have to be in a face shield and a mask and all of that. You have to get tested. So it's it's really been a, a roller coaster um, since March, which was when this whole lockdown happened. Um, I think mo moving forward um, for my class, I think a lot of us. Um, are still deciding what we want to do um, if we are going to go with go through with our plans um, a residency to be a doctor to the barrio to go into public health um, or to take a year off given everything that's happened and we did a kind of poll about a month ago in our we have a chat group of our class and I think it's 50 percent so 50 percent want to do a year off 50 percent want to go through with uh, residency, public health, um, masters, etc. So moving forward, I think um, obviously it's difficult if you want to go like, like if we're talking about residency, it will be difficult. Well, not very difficult, but it, you'll have to put a little more effort, especially if you didn't go through the actual physical rotation. Like let's say uh, if you want to be an, inter an internist and you didn't get to go through the IM internship, then it, you might have a problem, right? You'd have to catch up. But I think um, speaking for you, we were able to experience a lot of this during clerkship um, because our clerkship is also spent in PGH. So I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that at least for our class, we'll be able to cope naman with what's going to happen to us moving forward thank you so michelle so are you going into residency next year or uh mago hold, hold off Muna for next year um because the applications for residency opening this january 2021 are already starting now so i'm going to skip on that first um i'm going to apply for residency next year okay Okay, let's go to Seth. See, Seth actually graduated 2019, and he has plans to take a uh, residency in the U.S. But with with the pandemic, how did it affect your plans, uh, Seth? Are you still applying for residency in the U.S. or maybe Wagmuna this year? Um, well, to answer your question, Sir June, yes, my plan is still to apply for residency this year. But in terms of what happened to me in the pandemic, I think the three main things are, first, there's no planning anymore in the pandemic. Like, yeah. all my plans are just out the door. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I think when the pandemic happened to me, I had to reassess my uh, myself, my relationship with myself. Cause a lot of it has to do with isolation. So that have uh, that had to happen, and finally, there is no planning during the pandemic, but there's still preparation for the opportunities that come up or when things finally lighten up. So that was also important for me to realize. So first, what did I mean when I said there's no planning? Well, obviously it happened to everyone, but personally, when the pandemic uh, caused the lockdown in Manila. I had just flew to the U.S. because I was supposed to take uh, the U.S. MLE, which is the U.S. board exam, step one. And then when I was about to take it, 
they postponed it in the US. And so I was stuck there because it's a lockdown at home and they they postponed my exam in the US. And I had decided at that time to volunteer to help in the COVID response. So I volunteered in a community hospital in New Jersey for about four months. And at the same time, while I was looking at patients, I decided maybe I can help with the data I got. And I did research with Chris actually, and we got to publish some papers. Um, apart from that, I, I eventually kept having to reschedule my exam, which kept getting postponed. And then my flight home kept getting postponed. So everything was just really not planable. But eventually when they finally said, you can come home. And as soon as I got home, they said, I can take the exam. I just took it because I don't know if they're going to lock it down again or anything. So everything's up in the air. You just do what you can, like take it a day at a time, sometimes literally. <laughs> so <laughs> that was about the planning. And then with the relationship with myself, like on the day they said, oh, your exam's postponed. The rest of your month is like open and you're isolated and you don't know what you're going to do. So I had to think like, what was I supposed to do anyway? So I had to structure my day, structure my weeks. And then I had to scrap it all and do it again. And you realize what's important to you, what helps you move forward every day, even without all these goals. Because I felt like in med school, especially in PGH, you're too busy to think about how you feel about anything. It's just, you have to do these five things today. And by the time you finish the fifth thing, it's the next day now that, so you just keep going. And with the pandemic, uh, I was forced to slow down and think about why is this important to me? Why am I doing this instead of this? And apart from being efficient with yourself, you're trying to be empathetic with yourself also. So you try to know what it means to you and how you feel about it. That's how it felt for me. And finally, I had to keep preparing for the steps. I actually ended up taking step two before taking step one. And the way that happened was I just studied everything I could. and whatever opened up I took and it's been working out so far but obviously it's not the ideal way to do things but um, if I had any advice for my younger self or anybody about to do the same thing I would say just be ready as much as you can and you'll be surprised with the opportunities that come your way and if you're prepared for it you'll make the most of it thank you Thank you, Seth. How about si Ivan? Because when the pandemic came uh, and the lockdown, he was a, you were a fourth year uh, medical student, right? And then we're still on lockdown, and now you're an intern. I'm sure among our panelists, ikaw siguro pinaka-apektado. What is your story here? Yes, so to pong pandemic ito, it really had a drastic effect or drastic change sa uh, training namin. Uh, especially yun yeah, na mention you po na it started when I was a fourth year medical student no clerkship namin and it really hit our major rotations no um, sa akin na miss ko ang internal medicine rotation which is a very significant uh, part of the training and you know ang laking ang laking learning ang laking chunk ng learning sa uh, nawala uh, although nagcontinue naman online pero still that cannot even compare do sa mga kuwa mong experience pula sa actual uh, rotation di ba and then for this internship, no, um, this this is really not what we had imagined back when we were still applying for different hospitals for our internship matching. Um, sobrang nag-iba, lalo na napaka significant ng junction na to sa isang medic sa medical training na uh, isang clerk and intern na uh, kung saan dapat masolidify mo na yung uh, theoretical mo, yung skills, yung clinical skills mo, pero dun dun kami tinamaan. So I think that will really hurt our uh, our future training or our future chances, uh, especially since um, yung ginagawa namin ngayon dahil sa, dahil sa, sa pandemic, naging online na, nag-shift na to online ng internship. And I think that will be very difficult uh, for for you guys to understand na yung internship mo online lang, anong ginagawa nyo. Um, so uh, bigyan ko na lang kayo ng quick insight na yun nga, ang first half na internship year namin, um, it's going to be purely online, and the second half will be hopefully uh, magiging on-site na or mag-resume na yung physical duty namin. So that is in compliance with the APMC and 
the Ched advised told me that uh, the physical duties will not start not earlier than um, January 2021, and provided that the hospital should be in a low risk area. Um, so what we're doing now is that you, diba, in a normal schedule, two months usually a nakaalat for major rotations, diba? IM, pedia, surgery, and OB. So in sa online namin, so we are going through only the major rotations. So one month for OB, one month pedia, one month surgery, one month IM. And then yung uh, latter half to mga major rotations, yung continue namin sa on-site para maiwasan yung uh, may mamiss ka na clinical rotation. So para at least kahit na uh, splice in half na yung exposure, we can still gain something from it na hindi na-consume lahat ng rotation hours mo for a particular um, rotation. So yung sa amin naman, um, syempre sobrang layo dapat nung, sobrang layo nung ganitong setup sa inimagine namin. And yung syempre yung yield na makukuha sana namin is very different. And yun niya. Um, Pero very grateful ako sa different hospitals because they are still coming up with a lot of ways to help us interns in our learning while giving prime consideration sa safety namin. So for example, uh, tinatry pa rin nilang i-mimic yung usual uh, activities as an intern. So sinasama kami sa mga different ward conferences, sa mga yung, admission conferences, ward audit. Um, kasama rin kami sa mga lecture series para sa mga fellows and residents and I think uh, very beneficial din para sa amin kasi parang advanced class siya in a sense. Uh, ang dami namin natututunan, very technical pero um, nakikita namin yung kung gano'n siya kahalaga sa clinical practice. Then aside pa doon, uh, yung may ibang rotations ka na nagbibigay pa ng duty days sa amin kahit na online ang setup, uh, what we do then is that yung resident on duty will give a copy of the census sa aming mga interns and then kasama kami sa post-duty rounds nila. So, um, ayun, meron din kami mga online examinations. Binalik din yung ibang didactic activities in med school like case, case presentation, case discussion, SGDs, tapos mga lectures um, na iba-iba led by interns pa. So, I think um, kahit na compromised yung training namin, uh, hindi naman nagiging idle yung mga interns and somehow we're making, we're trying to maximize what we can uh, during this situation. Although napakahirap, um, although tinatry lang namin maging optimistic na sana by the time that we return to the hospitals, we can make up for the lost time. Kasi, yun nga, of course, expect ko na by next year after namin mag-board exam, kami na yung mag apply for residency magiging tighter yung competition since uh, I think yung mga recent board passers and yung mga magtitake ng board exams this November, I think um, a huge chunk will forego the application for residency this year. And ayun nga, most likely, uh, magbabottleneck kami next year. Uh, sabay-sabay kami mag apply So I think, yun nga, yung mas patas attrition and yung competition for residency slots. Sure, for those people na uh, mag-decide uh, how continue next year. Well, thank you. Well, thank you, Ivan. How about Chris? What's the situation in the U.S. at Harvard? Sige po. Um, dito po sa amin, the situation is iba-iba din siya depending on the state. From what I've, in, in terms of my own personal experience first, I um, actually chose to do extra research here na nahawa po na funding to do research for a year. So, Tama tama po pagdating ng COVID, I was actually doing purely computational work from home. Um, I had the privilege to work with um, um, with Seth, um, with a, a mutual mentor, uh, Dr. Chen, who's a UPCM grad, um, and another collaborator, uh, Dr. Joseph Fabio, who I, I believe speaking also on another panel. Uh, so we've been doing a lot of research together. And I think in terms of my own education, that piece has been essentially preserved. Um, you know, Seth mentioned the uh, isolation that, that we all felt. My family's in Manila. Um, and so I was all alone here. I had not, I haven't seen them for nine and a half months now. Um, and a lot of that kind of, I guess, emotional toll, I just decided to sublimate and convert into essentially like academic and research energy. And I, I'm ultimately uh, grateful for the opportunity, opportunity to have been able to do so. Um, in terms of academic or, I guess, training um, outcomes for other people, I was speaking to batchmates from, oh, I guess not batchmates, but classmates from um, from different batches. 
Um, and similar to what uh, Dr. Shimpao Kopo said, um, is that a lot of um, the clerks, especially, lost a large chunk of their um, of their of their core rotations. And Harvard did something similar to what um, was being done in the Philippines, where um, hinahati bring rotations and they do part online and then part in person with the anticipation that the future, which is now, um, would actually have uh, less transmission and, and kind of safer re-entry into the system. I was able to do a couple advanced rotations um, in August um, with some pretty sick patients, which is testament to how much more controlled at least the Boston situation is. Um, I was on the bone marrow transplant service August 2020, um, and I did not take care of a single COVID patient, nor did I feel that I would get it. But that's because the hospital I was at, the Brigham and Women's Hospital, um, um, made every effort to contact trace and to make sure that everybody was tested when they needed to be but also benefited from the fact that Boston actually has pretty low rates of COVID now. Um, I think contrast can be set with um, what happened in New York um, in the spring, so on March, but um, New York was the epicenter of the world, I believe. Um, and many of my college friends who are med students there um, were given the opportunity to actually graduate early and convert to internship even before the usual kind of new graduation um, and start working in the hospital. And some of them chose to do that. Um, I think the, what ultimately happened was each state and each hospital system adapted based on what was happening in their kind of local context. Um, the, I think, most difficult part in terms of education will be what the clerkship students missed because they were the ones who were asked to stay home and to learn virtually. Um, those of us who were on research or who only had advanced electives left um, lost the opportunity to do a lot of those advanced electives but i think having done our clerkship year deciding what field to go into becomes a little bit easier because we have more data to work with um and then lastly in terms of the intern class so in the states but med school is four years and an intern year is the first year of residency um um the interns actually started and went ahead and took care of covid patients and got 100 percent clinical training um as they would without COVID. And I think that, you know, initially came with some tension, some fear, especially when we didn't really know what we were working with um, in terms of what COVID, what threat COVID posed to, to, to the interns. Um, but now my friends who are interns are pretty happy kind of moving along with their own training. Um, and so I think in some sense, that's my answer is a little bit not as representative because um, because in Boston, the situation has been relatively under control. Um, but, I speak as someone who's also fortunate to have been able to dedicate this year to kind of learning from an, from a research point of view. Um, but I think only time will tell how it will really affect the training of the future generations of doctors, because in some sense, you could argue that it makes us more adaptable as well. Um, people have been, you know, Seth mentioned the opportunity to sit and think and pause. And I think that's also an important part of our training. And perhaps that makes people a little bit more reflective um, if at the cost of Hours in the hours that are spent physically in the hospital. Um, so I think only time will tell if the effect on training was truly all negative or if there were some silver linings to to to, to what we as a world experience together. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. So I think we are ready for online questions. So I will direct uh, some questions specifically to the person I think who can answer it the best. So our first question is, Doc Ivan, has anyone in CHED discussed the plans for the interns? CHED ba ang involved? Uh, okay, so, so yun po, ano, yun yung para naging confusion din sa amin dati kasi graduates na kami ng medical school pero hindi kami officially employed ng hospital. So para nasa gray area po yung mga interns. So, sino ba talaga yung nag-handle sa concerns namin? And um, sa consensus po, naging, uh, naging final na na susundin po ng APMC, yung Association of Philippine Medical Colleges, yung advisory ng CHED kasi technically hindi pa rin naman talaga kami uh, doctors dahil nga hindi pa kami nakitake ng board exams. Um, and part pa rin siya ng medical training. So, um, yung po sa CHED advisory, as... Uh, yung latest na po na masasabi ko is yung binigay sa amin noong August na yun nga po, um, the start of the physical duty will not be earlier than January 2021 and conditional pa yun, dapat yung hospital po na kusang tinag-train 
uh, should be located in a low risk area or at least an MGCQ status. So ayun po, at least na clarify na sa sa amin kung anong kanino agency kami susunod. And yun po, naging universal naman na susunod kaming mga interns, lahat ng mga interns involved, susunod dun sa CHED advisory. And yun po yung bilawaring basis ng ATM. Okay. Uh, okay, next uh, question. Future Doc Chris. Okay, Chris, this is for you. Online, online ba classes nyo? What are the safety precautions sa Harvard? Do you see patients? So it depends on what year the the this kind of the student in question is. Um, for the first year class, so preclinical, for everything was on. Everything is and continues to be online. For the clerkship students, it's hybrid, so they do part online, part in person. Um, for us, advanced rotators who are finished our clerkship year, we actually went and starting. July 2020, before the hospital started opening up. So when I did my bone marrow transplant rotation um, and endocrine rotation at the at the Brigham, um, those were a total of six weeks of everyday inpatient, um, inpatient in person rotation. People have the option to request online rotations based on their degree of safety and their own personal risk, especially for people who have their own kind of comorbidities. But some and for a lot of us had the opportunity to really go in and and, and restart. Um, I felt that. Be, being at the Brigham with pretty sick patients, the empties of the patients were neutropenic and at high risk of you know, of, of, of very poor outcomes should they get COVID. I actually felt that given the precautions that the hospital was taking, they just safe the feeling of the students and also for the patients. But again, I think that's also because Boston is fortunate in that people have been good about um, about wearing masks, about uh, physical distancing, and the rate of transmission has been relatively low compared to other parts of the U.S. So long answer to a short question. Um, yes, uh, starting March, July 2024, our rotations have been completely in person. Um, yeah. Sure, thank you. Uh, so next question. Good morning, Paul. Uh, okay. Pan, good morning po, Angela May Jong, junior intern of Angeles. Ay, bumati lang yata yon. Uh, next question is, paano nagkikita mga barkada ngayon? Online ba? Zoom inuman ba? Because med school and residency is time for inuman and barkadahan. Michelle, you want to answer this question? Um, Actually, it's hard because right now we're in review season. So it's mostly... We, we just chat with people. Um, there was a time actually earlier in the quarantine where we would have the Zoom ara, basically a Zoom call, but we're studying. So we're not really talking to each other. It's just so that there's a human in front of me who's also feeling the same thing I'm feeling. Um, but yeah, for us who are reviewing for the board exams, um, this quarantine forced us to study in because you know we don't really have anything else to do. Eh? We we have to stay in, so it's mostly been review. Um, for the people who are enrolled in review class, says have some lectures, um, but yeah, everything's on, it, so we really go out anymore. But I'm sure uh, once you pass the exam, Zoom inuman yan siguro, Eva. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. There. Do we have the next question? There. <laughs> Dapat daw kayo yung sumagot ng inuman. Lalo na si Michelle once she pumasala ng, ng boards. Do we have a next question, Reina? Ayan, Doc Michelle, this question is for you. Kumusta yung preparation natin sa physician licensure exam? We heard Required ba magpa-COVID swab test to end, to do the exam, Michelle? I guess um, this is just a rumor. So, yeah, for initially when the exam uh, initially they they said they were going to require uh, the swab tests, um, but in view of that, we're allowed now to submit a certificate of quarantine. So we just have to do a 14-day quarantine and then have a licensed physician or a 
a uh, local official sign it saying that we were quarantined and we have no symptoms, things like that. Which if you think about it, it's not that hard to do the quarantine because we're studying anyway. So we're really locked inside our houses. Um, so that's, that's what the ruling is now. And then for the exam, we have to take the exam wearing uh, PPE. So we have to be in a mask and a face shield. Um, if we have a fever on the day of the exam, you can't take the exam, things like that. If you have symptoms, as in they're going to screen us before we uh, enter for symptoms. And um, if you have symptoms, you can't take the exam. And then I heard um, because it's in person and then um, about 3,000 people are going to be taking it. So. Um, they need to make sure we're uh, doing proper distancing and things like that. Yeah. Me Thank venue you. na ba Michelle? Me, me venue na Michelle? Um, venues, several universities. I think UST is still a is still a venue, but they they chose many venues. They I think that was the main problem. They had to find many schools, and then they wanted open air. So, iba talaga yung mm -hmm. exam namin this year. It will be an open-air gymnasium, mga ganong style. Tapos, naka face shield and mask. So, I think it will be an interesting experience. Hopefully, um, okay naman. Because, you know, it's hard enough to answer an exam, but to answer an exam with all of this going on around your head, you know, it will be, be different. <laughs> okay. I think there is a note here, online note, na personal heroes niya are Pia works back yeah, and President GMA, Asteen. <laughs> uh, any more questions, Reina? Okay, here, Doc Ivan. Will they provide PPEs for interns if ever? How about in areas of the country na low risk of COVID? So I guess you could speak based on your current situation about PPEs. Or interns? Uh, well, I think, doctor, that will be a case to case basis depending sa agreement po ng interns council nyo with the particular hospital uh, that you're rotating in. So, sa amin po sa DOH, um, uh, nung una kasi, meron pong parang, dapat kasi September talaga babalik na kami and sobrang naging um, core issue po yung uh, provision ng PPE. And by then po, ang naging um, the decision is a part will be provided by the council because we fund the internship council and we will provide it from the interns and a part will be uh, provided by the hospital. Since uh, nga po, interns are not officially employees of the hospital, we are not the priority for the uh, provision of PPE. But of course, um, with the changes happening throughout the months, I think... Um, Eh, hindi po, hindi ko, hindi ko masabi talaga kung paano po yung magiging situation come January if magpo-provide na yung hospital sa amin since hindi na, since magkakaroon na ng mga dedicated areas for, since naging mas systematic na yung pag-handle ng COVID patients and uh, mas kakailangan nilang yung, yung talagang full low PPE para dun sa mga COVID uh, areas and hindi na magiging ganun ka, mas de, hindi ganun ka demanding yung mga clean areas natin. So I think uh, that will be, that will still be subject to change. Um, and ang, ang ginagawa na lang namin ngayon is as much as possible, we're trying to procure our personal, yung sarili talaga naming supply para pagdating ng uh, January, at least more or less, prepared po kami regardless kung makakapag-provide ba yung hospital or makakapag-provide ba yung um, kung, sino mang, kung sino mang concerned body yung mag-handle sa interns sa particular hospital na um, nag-rotate sila. Sorry, thank you, sir. Okay. So, a question for Dr. Seth. Did you take the MLE online? Paano yon? Okay. So, like I said, I took the MLE here in the Philippines. What we did was we had to take the exam just like uh, Michelle said. We would be in our... Actually, you only needed to have a face mask and face shield upon entering the building, but you're faced with a cubicle and then you practice social distancing so nobody's around you. And in the test center, it's just you and a computer. It's online, but you have to do it in a test center, both for step one and step two. Hey, Seth, a uh, question lang. Are there a lot of people that take the USMLE 
right now? I think the way the test center schedules is they only have a maximum amount of people in the room. So you mga kasama mo dun, you're not all taking the USMLE. Uh, to answer your question about physically taking it, you're mm -hmm. taking it with nurses or other professionals. Yeah, but in uh -huh. terms of how many people from the Philippines are taking the MLE, from my batch, uh, at least from UP, parang there's only like three of us or something like that. I don't know about next year, mm -hmm. pero this year, not a lot. And then from other batches, I think na delay din yung transcripts nila nung nag lockdown. Tas nagsara yung med school. Got it. So I think this is another question for Seth. Uh, is residency training in the Philippines different from the U.S. in terms of time and duration? I think you could probably answer about internal medicine because yun that's what you're planning to do. So maybe answer briefly lang since you're not yet a resident. So we uh, can answer that, Seth. So go ahead. I think my answer has to come from the perspective of an applicant lang, like uh, Sir Jung said, residency training as I've seen it in the Philippines versus the U.S. is we definitely have a higher volume of patients in the Philippines. There's a lot of uh, hands-on experience versus in the U.S. they have a set limit for duty hours for the amount of patients you have. And they also have a bigger emphasis on uh, research work. So publications and scholarly work are more emphasized in the U.S. In terms of time and duration, mm -hmm. yeah, I answered this one. Okay, so maybe uh, I will just answer a little bit uh, for this uh, online Facebook user. Actually, I think uh, ngayon naman, uh, hindi na masyadong magka, ano, magkaiba yung residency in the U.S. and in the Philippines. But uh, the duration of time, you know, like for internal medicine, it's still three years. Surgery is five years over there. You know, most of the surgical fields are usually five years. And specialties like derma, radiology, usually it's four years because on their first year, they have to do a rotating internship. So para yung internship natin dito as fifth year, that is the first year in the U.S. So if you're going to go to derma, or neurology, you do a rotating like medical internship, and then you do your next three years, second to fourth year in neurology or derma or uh, other fields. Okay? So may next question tayo. Oh, ito. Ama ko sinasasagot nito. Paano po ang love life? I'm so sad na online because we, where will we meet people? So sinong sasagot nito? May volunteer Chris. or I, I will I will Chris, name a person a person. Oh, Chris, now I think your <laughs> panelists are volunteering you, Chris. Love for medicine, na, med medicine na muna po. Kasi online na muna lahat. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Ano puro Facebook na lang ba and social media na lang muna, Chris? Uh, meet them online first before you meet yeah. them uh, in person. <laughs> Get to know their hearts and minds, alam mo na, de ba? Ganon na. I agree. I agree. Ah, uh, uh, my next question, Diana. Let me just check. Ah, okay, can make questions, pa dito. Uh, I think baka, there might be no more kind of. Uh, okay, okay. Ito. very simple question. Uh, Gusto niyo pa rin, I think it's probably not an appropriate question kasi gusto niyo pa ba maging doctor or you're practically doctor na kayo eh. I think uh, appropriate yung question na yun sa mga nasa in medical school pa. Diba? Or somebody wants to answer that kasi kayo kasi practically si Chris is already fifth year. Nag-graduate na yan. Uh, Michelle, Seth, and Ivan is finishing. So, baka unless one of you want to answer, baka hindi na appropriate siguro at your level yung question na gusto niyo pa rin ba maging doctor in the face of a pandemic? Anyone want to answer that? But I think uh, I think your answer will still be yes. Uh, meron bang, meron bang sasagot na hindi? Oh, ito, this one. I think this is a better question. Uh, do you regret taking medicine? So, 
see who wants to volunteer. Uh, let me see. I think ano na lang. I'll go with uh, si Ivan. Ivan okay. ano sa gud mo dito. So for the question, uh, do I regret taking up medicine? Well, um, I think it's unavoidable now that we experience no second thoughts regarding our choices since uh, nakita naman natin yung backlash sa academic community, sa scientific community. Nakita natin kung paano yung negative reaction ng so, public sa mga experts natin. Pero still, uh, I think mas lalo nung na-emphasize yung need no for people to continue this uh, this this profession they we are in need for more doctors and i think um, see looking at our you know, our colleagues na nasa field uh, talaga may inspire ka naman na magpatuloy sa medicine because they are still continuing what they're doing despite the huge risk sa kanilang safety sa kanilang life uh, kita natin you know, unfortunately meron tayong mga colleagues na naging victim ng covid um and by mga doctors, napaka, it's so easy for them to uh, turn their backs or uh, turn their backs on medicine, di ba? Parang talikuran na lang lahat to. Pero they didn't do it, di ba? Um, kahit na comfortable na sila sa lives nila, they still chose to continue their profession. So I think that it's um, a huge inspiration for us doctors to be. I mean, mga magiging future doctors na nakikita namin yung example ng mga colleagues namin. And basta emphasize na yun nga. Uh, kailangan, kailangan lalo ang mga katulad nating doktors, lalo na sa panahon ng isang pandemya. So, hindi po ako okay. nag-regret na tinake ko yung medicine. And magpapatuloy pa rin ako, katulad nung uh, dati ko pong mga plano. Okay, I think that's what I call a, that's what I call a hero. So, ito naman, yeah. may comment pa dito about love life. Swab test muna. So baka kung if you go on dating in the future, hingi ka muna ng ano, swab test result. Negative pa to or positive. Okay. Uh, any more questions? I think baka... Uh, okay. Uh, this is a message to everyone. Thank you, young doctors. Your dedication is admirable. Laban lang Pilipinas. So I think uh, our, our time is up. So what I will do is, if you have an advice for your colleagues na nasa medical school right now or planning to become a doc doctor in the future, what is your advice to them? Okay, Michelle? Um, I think my advice would be to just take it a day at a time. Um, med school is tough um, and it will really push you to your limits physically, emotionally, mentally. Um, and, you know, it's, it's good to surround yourself um, with people who can give you that support that you need throughout um, the, your training. Um, it's inevitable. There really will come a time that you will think about why you went into medicine and, you know, if this was the right call, um, should I go do something else? But uh, I like to believe that there is no greater job than being a doctor. Imagine we're, we're, our job is to take care of people and to comfort people. And I feel that um, it's, it's a valuable contribution to society. And so I think um, whatever you're going through, laban lang, um, it gets better. Um, hard, but it gets better. So. Um, keep going, work hard, and don't forget to still enjoy. Um, enjoy the journey. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, Michelle. Uh, Seth, what message mo sa mga persons na who may go into medical school and may have U.S. Uh, plans uh, for residency after that? Oh, in terms of making plans like that, like I said, it's hard to do that, especially in our context now. But if you're 100% decided, I feel like step one to do that would be to make sure you're decided on going to the States, if that's your plan. Because I would say it's a, uh, more than the academic demands and the clinical demands. You have the bureaucratic hurdles that you have to overcome. And that's almost as tiring as just the medical training. So you have to make sure you're uh 100 percent sure you're willing to go through all of that because if not you might as well consider all your other options that are much easier to do uh based on 
how how to get there that is out of your control kasi. Other other than that, if you're going into medical school or medical training, I would say again, you have to be sure because it's like Mitch said it's not easy. You're going to doubt yourself and it's hard to quit in the middle of it. You're going to feel like there was so much effort put into it already. But if you've decided that you're going to do that, I think there are three things you can do to really help yourself see it through to the end. One is you need to know yourself. So you need to know what it looks like when you're giving something your best. Because on the days that as a person taking care of other human beings, you're going to be invested in your patient. Sometimes they're going to recover. Sometimes they're not going to do well. And the best way to come home to a situation where your patient didn't do as well as you wanted is to know you gave it your all. Now you did your best, you didn't hold back, and that was the best outcome for your best effort. And that's, I feel like personally, that's how I can live with the things that happen. Second is to surround yourself with good people. I feel like if you get into a medical school, you're surrounded by people who want to help other people anyway. So that's a good set of people already. And going through the hardships that we describe is a lot easier to do it with like-minded people who are there to care for people, who really just want to do something for the greater community that will lift them all up together, you know? And finally, like we've all mentioned already, you have to know yourself, you have to be comfortable with yourself and think about it as a person who comes home from the hospital you've been awake 36 hours or however long your shift has been. And it's really just you and yourself as company. And if you don't enjoy that, you need to learn how to. Otherwise, you're really gonna have a hard time. That's it, thank you. Okay, uh, how about uh, Ivan? Anong advice natin sa mga uh, currently in medical school and having problems, uh, including mental health issues? Okay, so doctor, I think uh, summarize ko dalag yung masasabihin ko in five points. No, for the so first one, parang keep your eyes on the goal. No, second, is this, this is the time to connect and disconnect. Uh, next, it's you invest in yourself. Then you next point is be thorough with your methods and how you will do that. And five is to take care of your own health. So, uh, una, keep your eyes on the goal. No? So, ngayong pandemic, it's it's so hard to keep your focus and it's so easy to lose your motivation dahil nga sa mga nakikita natin yung daily unfortunate developments, no? yung constant barrage ng no? bad news. Um, but still, um, try to keep your eyes on the goal. No? See your, uh, keep sight in, of your objectives. And then, this is, the, again, sabi ko kanina, this is the time to connect and disconnect. No? Unahin natin yung disconnect. So, for, it's, it's, it's I think it's pretty normal na nakakaramdam tayo ngayon ng ng anxiety sa nangyayari because everything is really uncertain. Uh, so ang masasabi ko lang, this is the time to disconnect. Uh, disconnect with all the negative things that's going on in the internet. No? Social media has been a very toxic place uh, recently and you know, ang sabi ko lang, yan follow nyo lahat ng mga ganyang klaseng content. Um, Although, uh, try to, you know, look at credible sources for news. You know, just enough to keep yourself informed. Kasi, uh, as uh, pwede ko yung mother ko, hindi naman social apathy yung pagiging disconnected. It's more of choosing your own battles. Kasi there are things beyond our control right now and it's really a waste of energy to uh, fret over those things na alam natin hindi natin kaya control, na hindi natin nakikita, uh, sa mga nakikita natin mali. Diba? And then, um, also, this is the time to connect, no? Uh, or connect with your families and connect with your friends. Uh, para sa iba naman, this is the time to reconnect with your families and friends, di ba? So, sabi nga ni Dr. Seth kanina, uh, it will be a lot easier if you're going through all of these, no? this pandemic, medical training, uh, medical school, if you have some sort of support system. And we might never know that baka meron din tayong friend or meron tayong family member na nangangailangan din pala ng support. Uh, so keep an eye out for it, for each other. And then, um, ano pa, invest in yourself. Uh, sabi ko, uh, mas sabi ko dito, whatever you're studying now, whatever you're practicing now, it, it will never be put to waste because uh, somewhere along the line, somewhere, someplace, uh, kung anong inaaral mo ngayon what you're doing, uh, what you're practicing right now, and the skills that you develop mo, 
that could spell the difference between life and death for a patient. So, so wala talaga masasayang dyan. So, so we're not just studying for an exam, we're not just studying for uh, a spot for residency training. We're studying to be able to, you know, help people, to so help our patients. And yun ya, so be thorough with your fourth point to be thorough with your methods. It's more of um, knowing what learning style would fit you best. Kasi iba-iba naman talaga ng uh, learning methods or learning styles na nag-work best for different individuals. Are you a are you an eidetic learner, a visual, visual ba, auditory? So what works for you, capitalize on that. And then um, I think you should also take care of your own health. So to very simple lang naman to. You need to eat right, sleep right, uh, you need to move right. You know, um, just surround yourself with all the positive energy that you can. And of course, uh, maybe now is also the time to connect with God. Uh, parang sana siya yung maging pinakasandigan natin, pinakasanggunian natin uh, sa mga times na nahihirapan tayo. So, ngayon lang naman. So, continue lang, laban lang. Kasi uh, by the end of the day, matatapos, meron din itong katapusan, hindi lang natin alam kung kailan. So, ayan. thank you, Sir Jude. Your great advice. Finally, Chris, uh, what's your advice for uh, our medical students here? I guess kind of two main points. Um, one is uh, stay skeptical. I think be willing to question every assumption that you make and, and, and try to ask why, why, why. You know, why, why do we hold something to be true? Um, and why do we do things the way, the, way, um, the way we do? And if the answer is not substantiated, then we be ready to, to, to find something better and to push back. Um, I think that's the, I would argue, the potentially millennial in me trying to, trying to speak. I think the second piece is learn from your patients and learn from their stories. Um, we are in a privileged position to be there when people are suffering perhaps the most of their lives. Um, and by people, I don't just mean I, our patients, I mean their families and all the people that care about them. Um, and I think that has so many lessons for us to learn um, and apply to our own lives um, and take forward in how we how we choose to live. Um, uh, I'll share a bit about kind of my own takeaways. In, 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 you know, the, the, the grand context of the pandemic of, of proximity to death and dying. And I think in, in my own kind of field in, in oncology, um, I find that the two takeaways that are kind of corollary to that are the um, importance of living, living deliberately and, and knowing why you do particular things. I act because, um, as opposed to just kind of doing something just because that's the way it's done. Um, I think the second piece is to live urgently. Um, we, I think, have come to realize as a world that life is short, life is finite. Um, and therefore, it's important for us to, to to spend our time wisely and to understand why we why we do things um, and to live with some, some degree of urgency because we come to terms with um, the finiteness of everything. Um, so yeah, I, it's a bit kind of a, a, a big a big answer that I've been processing for the past year or so. Um, but something that is definitely my own takeaway from med school and I think is is a privileged perspective that I'm lucky to have from having benefited from my mentors and from most importantly my patients. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, to all our panelists, uh, napakagaling ho nila lahat, diba? And I'm sure with your dedication, with your brilliance, and you know you know what you want uh, magiging magaling kayo na doctor uh, and the country needs you okay so uh, i think what will happen is uh, we will have a short break uh, and then papasok ko yung uh, residency panel after so i'm not sure kung magkakaroon ng uh, i think dr anna's coming in and uh, dr anna hello welcome back Ayan. So, Ari, nagkikinig ako na nakamute ang aking mic. Ang galing na usapan na, na, na nating anim. Uh, the five of you had a great discussion. Thank you so much. And um, um, I'm very inspired by um, Dr. Michelle, who, how they stayed in PGH. I'm also inspired by the story of Dr. Chris. Uh, Saviorian pala si Dr. Chris went to Yale and Harvard. And also Dr. Seth. 
na naka-adjust siya sa dami ng na-postpone, na lockdown, na quarantine, pero hindi siya na give up and he's continuing to pursue his goals. And I'm also very much inspired by Dr. Ivan. He's a USD graduate. Um, like my husband, came from the province, but it just goes to show that there are talented Filipinos in every corner of the Philippines. At kung kayong apat po ang aasahan natin in our profession at sa Pilipinas, I'm sure eh, malalampasan natin lahat itong nadadaanan natin ngayon. Don't you think so, Dr. June? Our future yes, is I agree. with these young uh, doctors. Hindi sila kids. They are well-trained younger colleagues. Okay? So sa inyo pong uh, apat, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for giving us the time. It's time for us na mga gurangs to hear your thoughts because this is not a dictatorship, okay? At hindi pwedeng dictatorship ang medicine kung hindi hindi tayo ulad. Okay? Kasi baka magrebelde yung mga bata. <laughs> Nagre-rebelde na nga kasi ayaw magpalit ang mga matatanda. Okay? But kahit matanda kami, maganda pa rin kami at wala pong tututul dyan or else I will not give you a residency spot. Okay? So, ingat po guys. <laughs> Salamat. Dr. June, uminom ka muna ng tulad dahil stress okay. ka rin kanina sa connection. Mm -hmm. Michelle, good luck sa PLE. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Dr. Chris, pag makarating ako na Harvard, bibisitahin kita. Yeah. Seth, let us know you're taking your residency. And Ivan, sana makakita na kayo ng pasyente, no? So po. Okay.